this is another case of uh, colorectal metastasis, uh, colorectal metastasis of uh, uh, in, in, on the liver. Uh, this case was partially presented in one of our staff, but I couldn't conclude it. So I, I began again. It's a female, 39 years old. She had delivered eight months before symptoms and uh, she underwent an urgent operation for intestinal occlusion due to, to a sigmoid cancer in December uh, 2020. The pathology was a G2 adenocarcinoma, PT3N1B, two uh, lymph nodes uh, among 14, and M1A because she had synchronous liver metastasis. Uh, it was uh, RAS and BRAF wild type, and uh, she underwent chemotherapy with a fall fox uh, scheme since January to April 2021, and cetuximab was uh, added in the last cycle. But she also has symptomatic biliary stones, uh, and she uh, needed clearance of the common bile duct, but ERCP twice, one in February and the other one in March. Uh, so uh, she had also uh, symptomatic gallbladder stones. I show you some uh, images of, about the, the liver metastasis. Uh, she had uh, a lot of um, a lot of um, tiny metastases uh, in both sides of, of the liver. This is a gadocytic acid uh, sequence. You can see some tiny metastases distributed in both sides of the liver. Coded lobe was clear. This is a diffusion, the diffusion sequence. And you can see also the metastases. I apologize for the images, but I, I draw uh, the, the scheme of the metastasis and the gallbladder stones. Uh, at that time, I, I want to ask you what to do to continue chemo, to perform a cholecystectomy and then resume chemotherapy, or to do a liver resection plus cholecystectomy. Uh, we have seen the previous case by Rene. This is actually looks much more benign than that. Uh, I think that uh, I would like to hear the audience about chemotherapy and simply observation and see the response prior to any intervention. How many cycles did she How receive? How many cycles response? did she get? Four, four, four cycles. Did she respond? She responded, she had a partial response, yes. Okay. And uh, tumor markers were normal. And the left gobbler, the gobbler was left alone, is that right? The gobbler was, uh, she was uh, operated on by the, 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 the colon cancer, but uh, nothing more. Gobbler stones are still there, symptomatic and also, uh, this uh, distribution of liver metastasis, which had a partial response to chemotherapy. Do you have a CT follow-up to see the response? This was the, 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 the MRI that I show you. Uh, is was after the chemotherapy. After the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. After Any, the chemotherapy, yes. I understand. Any suggestions from the, the audience? Uh, nobody here has any suggestions, so please go ahead and tell. Think, hold on, hold on a second. Okay, we, I think if, we, if there is a good response to chemo, uh, even after four courses, uh, provided that the fact that the, the, the tumor are small, to continue chemo may lead to a missing metastasis. And this is, uh, I would say, some inconvenience for the surgeon. So if you have a good response, I don't know what are the, 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 the number of metastases. It seems to me that the tumor load is not so big. And so why not to treat this patient by uh, resection combined with radiofrequency for the very deep lesion? 
uh, as much as possible. So this would be my advice. But have you the number, the exact number of lesions? It was 17, 17 uh, lesions. Of course. And, uh, we, René, I, 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 we, we just uh, performed the same, we, we thought the same way. So we uh, tried to, we planned a, a, a hepatectomy plus cholecystectomy. And at that uh, time, do you perform a parenchyma sparing resection, an ALPS, or a two stage hepatectomy? I would prefer to do parenchyma sparing resection because the, the tumor are relatively small and it doesn't seem to me that there is a predominance on the right, on the left. Do you confirm this? Yes, yes. Uh, indeed, uh, we, we uh, opted to, to perform a parenchyma sparing uh, resection and this was the, the, the plan, the, the proposed surgery to perform uh, some uh, anatomic resection plus uh, metastasectomies and uh, to add a, a radio frequency or microwave ablation at the same time. But this was what we thought and we, uh, I, with the uh, intraoperative ultrasonography, we uh, found this distribution, this pattern of distribution, but it doesn't change very much. So finally, eventually we perform uh, three metastasectomies in segment two, four metastasectomies in segment three, a B segmentectomy for A and eight with an R1 vascular uh, on the middle hepatic vein, a subsegmentectomy five, and uh, metastasectomy in segment seven. You can see there the R1 resection and uh, also metastasectomy, two metastasectomies in segment seven and one metastasectomy in segment six. Also, we found a tiny metastasis deeply in the, at, at the edge of the Raymond seven, seven, five and, uh, and eight. Uh, and we plan to perform a microwave uh, intraper ablation intraoperatively. But we had some technical problems with the antenna. Uh, it was uh, really very awful to, to mention that. But what do you do at that time to keep uh, the metastasis for further treatment, to enlarge resection, to ligate right portal branch uh, for further right hepatectomy? or other. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot listen, please, uh, if you the question can is, uh, speak will, on. The question is, that will you perform any of these procedures at the time of your intervention, or will you delay all these options after? My question is, are you still in surgery? Yeah. That's yes. It. OK. So, Daniel, do you, what do you? What is your advice? Get another antenna. <laughs> <laughs> That's not possible. It's no, not no. possible in Argentina, no. Daniel. <laughs> Can't you, uh, can you be, because you showed us a very nice procedure and then at the end you stuck with one remaining metastasis, right? Yes. And it's not resectable by uh, parenchymal sparing? Too deep. Oh, it, it, it was, it was uh, too deep and uh, a, a major resection was needed to, to take out uh, this tiny lesion, eight millimeters diameter. No, what I would propose is uh, if you consider that uh, the, the, the resection will be too large to stay like this and uh, it could be proposed to insert a fiducial in such a way that to combine this with stereotactic, uh, I would say, radiotherapy after the operation. But I, I would agree not to go for a very, very uh, dangerous operation by extending the hepatectomy you have done, which is yet a very extended hepatectomy. Okay, well, we performed exactly that, like that, like you mentioned, René. We introduced a fiducial coil by ultrasonography, you can see the coil. And uh, at the eight 
post-operative day, a seventh post-operative day, excuse me, uh, we perform a city-guided microwave ablation. This fiducial call was very, very useful because uh, the deletion was very, very small with uh, some parenchymal changes due to chemotherapy and was the only way to find uh, this lesion by the CT scan. And you can see this uh, is uh, post ablation. The call is inserted just in the center of the lesion. And she resumed chemotherapy at postoperative day 30. And you can see the image control at fourth postoperative month. You can see that no lesions were uh, left. You can see the, 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 the sequela of the, of the microwave ablation. And the liver was really uh, regenerated very well. Nowadays, she's uh, free from this disease free and she's uh, in a continuum follow up. Very nice. Excellent presentation. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar.